Welcome to Worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church in Peoria. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes, and I have the pleasure of serving this with this congregation as its minister. This is our Boxing Day edition for worship. For the day after Christmas, we are online only, not in the building. Today is a great time to hang out in pajamas, savor a warm cup of coffee or tea or cocoa, and enjoy a shared pause amid a constantly moving world. As a faith with a liberal approach to religion, we can be subject to the drive of doing more, learning more, 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 more. For now, I invite you to simply be. In the spirit of mindfulness, I invite us to be aware of the legacy that we have in the Peoria area. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They welcomed the first European settlers that landed in this section of the Illinois River. We honor the Peoria people for who they were and for who they continue to be. Our ministry is made possible by the contributions of our members and friends. Every time someone says yes to staffing the book sale, teaching a class, or decorating the sanctuary, it brings that much more life and energy into our community and into our enduring message of hope. Financial contributions make a difference too. See the link in the chat or send a check to the church if you wish to make a donation. And as we come to the end of 2021, please consider the church for end of year donations. Thank you to everyone who's been catching up with pledges. We are finishing the year in a good financial place. Now for today, we have the pleasure of welcoming a familiar guest to our main message this Sunday morning. Gary Moore is offering his thoughts about the celebration of Kwanzaa, as he has for many years. He reaches back into the meaning of this celebration for the African-American community and how it applies to our current day. Gary is a longtime figure in Peoria. He is known for his public voice in broadcasting as well as in culture and education. So I want to thank Gary Moore for being our special guest today. And we have last minute or uh, addition to our program. Uh, Bear Flint Gruber is offering a program on how to be a good ally for folks who are trans. They're offering that program on Zoom at 1 p.m. today. See the link in the Friday news and on group IO for more information. And now we enter into worship with our first hymn, Shine on Me from Melanie Damore and offered by our Unitarian Universalist Association. Hello, UU family. I'm gonna sing a song with you called Shine On Me. It's an amazing spiritual that anybody can sing. And in these days when the things that we're dealing with, the feeling separate and all of that, and things seem so hard, this is one of those songs that you just throw your head back, put it in your medicine kit. All you have to do is ask. And here's how it goes. Shine on me, oh shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Oh, shine on me, yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Lift me up, oh, lift me up. Let the light from the lighthouse lift me up, oh, lift me up, yes, lift me up. Let the light from the lighthouse lift me up. Oh, hold, hold me close, close. Yes, hold, hold me close. 
Let the love from the light from the lighthouse hold me close. Yes, hold me close. So hold me close. Let the light from the lighthouse please hold me close oh shine shine on me shine on me yes shine on me let the light light from the lighthouse shine on me oh shine Shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on From the Reverend Gretchen Haley. Give up the fight. Give up the fight for some other moment, some other life than here and now. Give up the longing for some other world, the wishing for other choices to make, other songs to sing, other bodies, other ages, other countries, other stakes. Purge the past, Forgive the future for each come too soon. Surrender only to this life, this day, this hour, not because it does not constantly break your heart, but because it also beckons with beauty. It startles with delight. If only we keep waking up. This is the gift we have been given. These body clothes, this heart break, this pulse, this breath, this light, these friends, and this hope. Here, we remember ourselves. All are part of it all, giving thanks together. Come, let us worship. Our chalice lighting is from the International Council of Unitarian Universalists. This is a global chalice lighting created by Reverend Brian Keeley, a Canadian minister and past president of the ICUU. In times of darkness, we stumble towards the tiny flame. In times of cold, we seek the warming fire. In times of repression, we reach for the lamp of truth. In times of loss, we pray for the comforting light. In times of joy, we light a candle of celebration. Spirit of life, as we kindle this light, help us find what we need this day. In recent weeks, we have been returning to the practice of lighting candles in silence during our music for meditation. As we hear Rose's music, I invite you to bring to mind what is within you, the joys that lift, the sorrows that weigh upon you. Bring to mind those you remember and are missing, those names and blessings also that would inspire gratitude and love and joy. We bring our whole selves into this moment. Please join me for this time of reflection.
Beneath the Hustle and Bustle by Rev. Angela Herrera. Beneath the hustle and bustle, beneath the stream of thoughts that clamors and chatters over the landscape of our interior world, beneath our habits of momentum and stirring, there is a stillness, deep and peaceful, the place where creation begins. Who lives there? We know her by many names, truth, love, God, wisdom. We turn our hearts toward her face, toward the mystery, and bring our prayers of awe, of longing, of hope, of exhaustion. She holds us in our grief and anger, in our disappointment, our loneliness, and our rebirth. From her viewpoint, she sees us, children of the stillness, children of love. She sees our place in the order of things, joined together in the larger story. And she invites us again and again into living, invites us into loving, invites us into being loved. May we be restored to wholeness and blessed with peace. May all those whom we encounter receive this blessing through our being in the world. This is the time where we get to savor and expand our circle of care as we share the joys and sorrows, the names and the milestones that are among us. Uh, first, I offer a note of thanks to everyone who made Christmas Eve possible, our services for that evening that were both live and online, and now one of the services recorded and on YouTube. People were able to join us in so many ways, as well as being in person and lighting candles together. I want to thank uh, there's so many people who went into it and everybody who helped. So Austin Locke and Anthony Boudreau, who's tell worse on staff, working with Amy Pop uh, for the readings. We had so many readers and voices as well. People helped decorate the sanctuary. We had ushers. Dave Breeden and the choir showed up in both recordings and live for both services. And also a thank you to Rosa Chang and Emily Holmes Hicks for the beautiful music for this evening. It was such a special moment to be able to share this amidst all of our challenges and obstacles. I look forward to what we might do for Christmas next year. And now I want to turn to sympathy. We offer our sympathy to Lovana Farden as she mourns the death of her brother, Philip Wood. He died on December 20th at the age of 72 in Washington, Illinois. We offer our sympathy to Levina and all who knew Philip. And in our larger world, I also offer a note of sympathy. Uh, we mourn the passing of Bishop Desmond Tutu at age 90. He was the South African religious leader who really pushed and led the charge in so many ways for the ending of apartheid and also the efforts to how to find justice and healing amidst at the end of apartheid with the Truth and Reconciliation Commissions. He is also known as a great and lively spirit with a great sense of fun. He contributed so much to the world and we will miss, we will miss him dearly. And now, let me take one more moment of silence for all the joys, all the sorrows, all the milestones, all the names that live with us and remain unspoken. Please join me in a moment of breathing. Amen. And now we have our hymn I wish I knew how it was, how it would feel to be free. I wish I could say all the things 
say, say I'm loud, say I'm clear, for the whole round world to hear. I wish I could share all the love that's in my heart. Remove all the bars that keep us apart. I wish you could know what it means. So I want to take a moment to introduce our speaker for today. This is, we have a message recorded from Gary Moore, who is known in Peoria for being a public face for his broadcasting work. He also teaches, he talks about culture, and he really appreciates, he, he and I talked earlier this week, he appreciates being invited to be part of our worship uh, with us and offering something about Kwanzaa with the Unitarian Universalist congregation here because it helps him kind of think about what is it that he wants to say for this year and for this year and for this year. He'll introduce a little bit about himself in the course of his presentation, but he also will talk about bringing, uh, bringing the kind of the message of Kwanzaa and applying it to where we are today in just a little bit. So now I invite you to enjoy this very special message from Gary Moore. Whenever I feel like a motherless child, whenever I feel like a motherless child Whenever I feel Like a motherless child A long way from home A long way from home I go back to old Molly, back to old Molly the drum, back to old Molly the drum will take me back to old Molly the drum will take me back to old Molly the drum will take me back. Thank you. 
Kiambo means hello in the African language of Swahili. And Swahili, of course, is the language that Dr. Malata Karinga chose as the language for Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is the holiday that starts the day after Christmas and lasts through New Year's Day. And it is, again, my pleasure to share with you some of my thoughts about Kwanzaa. As you know, with the seven days, there are seven candles. And each one of those candles represents the different days of Kwanzaa. On the first day of Kwanzaa, we light the black candle, which stands for Umoja. Umoja means unity. The second day of Kwanzaa, Kujichagalia, which is self-determination. I want to talk more about Kujichagalia uh, today. The third day of Kwanzaa is Ujima, collective work and responsibility. The fourth day of Kwanzaa, Ujama, cooperative economics. The fifth day of Kwanzaa, Nia, purpose. The sixth day of Kwanzaa, Kuumba, creativity. And the last day of Kwanzaa is Imani. One of the best stories that I have of Kwanzaa memories is we had a Kwanzaa celebration one year. It was very cold, like 30 below zero. We weren't expecting anybody to show up. And there were seven parents who brought their children there. And we did a Kwanzaa program. I had each one of the children light one candle. And I picked the kids at random. And the last child that I picked, I asked her what her name was. And she said, Imani. Imani, the last day of Kwanzaa. I get goosebumps talking about that. But anyway, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that I have on the table uh, because I felt that they were relevant. Of course, we have the Kwanzaa display, the Kanara with the seven candles. We also have the fruit. Kwanzaa literally means first fruit of the harvest. And so you'll have people who will have the mat. The cup, the unity cup, is one that we use to pour libation to honor the ancestors. And if you see ears of corn, that usually denotes how many children a family has. One of the things that I think a lot of people are familiar with these days is kente cloth. Uh, this is cloth that is traditionally found in Ghana. Okay. Uh, another Ghanaian symbol is this bird, the Sankofa bird. The bird is going forward but reaching back. So as we go into the future, we learn from the past. I have a lot of different books up here. The Golden Age of the Moors, the Moors who were in Spain, who civilized Spain. They were there for 700 years. They were kicked out in 1492. Does that day, date, year sound familiar, right? Uh, I like the Moors because of their name, of course. Uh, I usually read fic uh, nonfiction, but one of the fiction works that I'm very fond of uh, is 2000 Seasons by Ayikwe Arma. His series, 2000 Seasons, The Healers, uh, Kemet, Fragments, are all classic works. Uh, another book, Now Valley Contributions to Civilization by Anthony Browder. I had the pleasure of going to Brazil with Anthony Browder. A lot of people don't know that more Africans were brought to Brazil than brought to the mainland uh, of the United States. Uh, and so when we went to Brazil, uh, we had good times, good conversation, and talking about African culture and how it has survived in this diaspora, how the children of, As of Africa were sprinkled throughout the New World. The English taking people to the United States, the Spanish taking people to places like Cuba, the Portuguese taking people to places like Brazil, and uh, the French, of course, taking people to Haiti. Uh, Haiti, you just gotta say a little quiet prayer for Haiti. Uh, I've been to Haiti, and Haiti was the only place, the only place where the Africans won, uh, kicked the Europeans off the island and declared their independence in 1804. Unfortunately for them, uh, they were this island, this old black fist of freedom in this world of slavery. Uh, other books that I have, The Debt by Randall Robinson, What America Owes to Blacks. Uh, this is a good Kwanzaa book here um, by Cedric. And we lost someone this year, Maladoma Patrice Somme, uh, excellent writer, uh, healer, 
uh, his books, Ritual of Water and the Spirit and the Healing Wisdom of Africa, uh, must reads for anyone who wants to really get into African culture and religion. Uh, he, he writes some, some what some people would call spooky stuff, okay, talking about how his grandmother got tired from walking so she would turn herself into a dog, okay? So it is not light reading from Somme, uh, but Somme had a, a beautiful spirit um, and books that I would recommend. Um, this book by Maurice White, who was the founder of Earth, Wind & Fire, Maurice died from Parkinson's a few years ago, but he talks about uh, how hip hop came about and how the music industry forced black artists to uh, incorporate this harder edge in their music. And now we have this template of hip hop, which some people uh, say nowadays in the messaging is very toxic. So again, books that I think are pretty important for me uh, in my edification and my journey uh, in knowing more about African history. I teach uh, history and culture as a part of the music curriculum at the middle school where I teach music. And uh, it's you can't teach the music without teaching about history and culture. My grandson is three years old and he thought this fruit was real and he took a bite out of it. Um, and poor little guy, uh, but he's gonna lose his teeth anyway, right? right? Okay, so I'll have a story for the children a little later. Last two books I wanted to show you, The Black Book. This is a classic, 1973. If you could find it, it's like a history scrapbook. It talks about the dozens, why black people play the dozens. It has a picture of Thomas Jefferson's slave in there. Uh, there's a letter by this scholar written to Du Bois, I want to say in 1905, where the scholar asked Du Bois, uh, we're doing this study on emotions uh, as a part of the human condition and want to know uh, whether the Negro sheds tears, okay? Uh, all kinds of stuff in the black book, chock full of wonderful information. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about self-determination in this age of COVID because, you know, we're all making choices about our health every day. And self-determination is a concept that really that sword cuts both ways. And when you think about African Americans and our history in this country, uh, we've always had tough choices. You know, do you jump off the slave ship or do you stay on? Do you run away with Harriet uh, or do you stay on the plantation? If the white man pinches your wife, do you punch him and risk getting lynched? Or do you uh, suppress that? Uh, for the rest of your life. Never easy choices for us. And so then given the medical apartheid that's been practiced in America on black people, the Tuskegee in, uh, experiment, which lasted 40 years, where black men had syphilis and the medical professionals knew it and yet did not treat them, or Henrietta Lacks, whose cells were harvested uh, and we still reap the benefit of her organ sacrifice to this day in terms of the, the medic medicines that have been developed. Um, you know, these are tragedies. And so now we have this pandemic, which is not a hoax. People are dying. And now you have the doctor with the needle saying, hey, here, take this vaccine. And a lot of black people are understandably hesitant. You know, I don't, I don't really trust it. And so we have to make some tough decisions. Again, never have been easy decisions. But self-determination. So how do we discern what is best for us? How do you decide what's best for you when you have a history of oppression and now you got this pandemic? How do you reconcile that? I think one of the ways that we do that is to look with the Sankofa bird uh, to the past for some examples. So you may recall that African Americans in this country were called boy. Uh, if you were a man, you were called boy, or you were called the N-word, or you were called colored, or Negro, and then black, and then we decided we, were, we want to be called African American. Muhammad Ali changed his name to 
uh, from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He chose not to go to the Vietnam War, sacrificed his career. Uh, when Carlos and Smith won uh, their track meet in the 68 Olympics, when the Star Spangled Banner was being played, they didn't put their hands over their heart and sang, they threw their black fists up into the air. Acts of self-determination, determining what we felt were culturally sound, important, things that edified us, right? When black people were called boy, the jazz musicians in Ken Burns' series, Jazz, he talks about how Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, they're playing jazz after World War II in New York, and the white sailors and soldiers are coming back from the war, and they're going to these clubs, you know, play another song, boy. Uh, and so the jazz musicians started calling themselves man, like, hey man, how you doing, or hey man. And that's something that we still do today. You know, these, these acts of self-determination uh, that edify us, that do something positive for us. I mentioned Maurice White's book, and his concern is that some of the messaging in the music now doesn't edify us. It's not positive, even though we have these platforms. And that's, I think, one of the biggest issues. We're here at the Minority Business Development Center uh, doing this uh, recording. And inside here, we have WPNV, which is Peoria's only black-owned radio station. And we have consciously chosen uh, our programming, uh, programs about topical events, about uh, financial literacy, health, uh, what's going on in our community. And this is one platform. However, I could do an interview with someone and they could say, hey, Gary, I want you to listen to my podcast. Okay. And so we have what's being called the plurality of platforms or the democratization of media so that it's no longer, I mean, and we welcome all the voices, right? But it's no longer a case where they're keeping information away from you as it is the, the truth could, as Aldous Huxley in Brave New World talks about, you know, your, your challenge is to find the droplet of truth in this ocean of trivia. So things could be hidden in plain sight. And so that whole issue of what's the, what's the right information uh, is a challenge for our community layered on top of our distrust uh, for the system. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, you know, COVID um, and getting the vaccine. I have chosen to get the vaccine and I've chosen to get the booster, partly because here at WPNV, I've had the opportunity to have doctors, Dr. Tim B. Connor Garcia, Dr. Kelvin Welch, Dr. Nadala, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Sterling, uh, Dr. John Fange, um, other health professionals, you know, Monica Hendrickson uh, with the health department, Dr. Leslie McKnight, come to the studio and talk firsthand about how these experiments, uh, clinical trials were done uh, and advocated for the vaccine. Because I grew up in the era of Hoover and the assassination of King and Kennedy and uh, my whole no, you know, ideas about conspiracy and, and, and COINTELPRO and I was in Chicago, I was a young man growing up, my brothers were in uh, Black Panthers uh, when Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were assassinated um, and so I know firsthand about distrust of the government. Uh, so they really had to come and convince me, uh, these black doctors, uh, with information. And uh, the last thing I want to say about that is we lost here at WPNV one of our engineers. Um, Jeremy Ruck was one of the engineers who got us on the radio. There's an article that was written about him in the Journal Star. Uh, he was unvaccinated. It was a choice that he made. And a little section here says he was not vaccinated. He thought it would do more harm than good, his wife said. And that was his choice. Everybody has his own beliefs, and it's a shame because he was a wonderful man, according to his wife. She and their son, however, made a different choice. They both got vaccinated without telling him. 
Um, the fact that we in the African American community continue to lose people disproportionately than other demographics, uh, according to Dr. Sacconi Reed, we are being victims twice once by the pandemic and the other by having hesitancy to a fault, in her view. Dr. Sacconi Reed, I think I mentioned at this last Kwanzaa celebration, is a nursing professor at Bradley who got her doctorate in nursing, following after her mother who was a nurse. Her mother unfortunately died from COVID on the weekend that they had the commencement where Sacconi got her doctorate. Uh, so a very profound passing. And she said, had her mother uh, been able to get the vaccine, uh, she certainly would have done it. And she encourages people to do that as well. So for our children, I usually like to tell them a story that edifies them, that makes them feel good. And this story is a story about choices about a little boy who thought he was ugly and he decided to make some choices and then he came around to make the right choice with the help from his parents. So this is a story about a little boy named Jamola and Jamola had a magic drum or a talking drum and Jamola thought he was ugly. And so he went to his mother and he said, Mama, I think I'm ugly. And his mother said, No, Jamola, you're a handsome boy. You look fine. And he said, No, I still think I'm ugly. So Jamola said, Hmm, I'm going to go to my father. So he went to his father and said, Baba, I think I'm ugly. And his father said, Jamola, you're a beautiful boy. You're not ugly. And he said, Well, I still think I'm ugly. So Jamola went to the animals and he said, Mr. Giraffe, I, I think I'm ugly. And the giraffe looked down and said, yes, Jamola, you are ugly. And what you need is a long neck like me. So he rubbed the giraffe's neck and played his drum. And the next thing you know, he had a neck like a giraffe. And his head was way up here. And then he said, oh, I don't know if I like this neck or not. So I'm going to go to another animal. So he went to an elephant. And he said, Mr. Elephant, I think I'm ugly. And the elephant said, Adam, you're ugly. You need a trunk like me. And so he rubbed the elephant's trunk. And the next thing you know, he had a trunk like an elephant and a neck like a giraffe. So he was walking around like this. So then Jamola said, well, I don't know if I like this neck or this trunk. I mean, these are pretty big animals, so I'm going to go to a little animal. So he went to a rabbit and the rabbit said, Jamola, Jamola, you're ugly. You need a ears like me. So he rubbed the rabbit's ears and the next thing you know, he had a neck like a giraffe, a nose like an elephant, and ears like a rabbit. So then Jamola said, hmm, that was kind of a small animal. I'm going to go back to a bigger animal. So he went to a zebra. And the zebras are pretty quiet. And the zebra said, Jamola, you're ugly. You need stripes like me. So he rubbed the zebra stripes. And the next thing you know, he had a neck like a giraffe, nose like an elephant, ears like a rabbit, and stripes like a zebra. And then Jamola said, hmm, I'm going to go back to a little animal. So he went to a porcupine. And the porcupine said, Jamala, Jamala, you're ugly. You need quills like me. So he rubbed the porcupine quills. And the next thing you know, he had a neck like a giraffe, nose like an elephant, ears like a rabbit, stripes like a zebra, and quills like a porcupine. So then he said, I'm going to go to the king of beasts. So he went to a lion, and the lion said, Jamal, you need hair like me. So he rubbed the lion's mane, and the next thing you know, he had a neck like a giraffe, nose like a, what? Ears like a, stripes like a, quills like a, hair like a, very good. Okay, so then he went to one more animal a monkey. And the monkey jumped up and down and said, Jamola, you're ugly, you're ugly. 
You need a tail like me. So he rubbed the monkey's tail, and the next thing you know, he had a neck like a giraffe, nose like an elephant, ears like a rabbit, stripes like a zebra, quills like a porcupine, hair like a uh, lion, and a tail like a monkey. All right. He maybe had hair like a monkey, too. All right. And then Jamola starts to do something. <laughs> I'm ugly. I got all of this animal stuff. And he knocked on his parents' door. And they opened the door and said, Oh, it's a monster. It's a beast. It's, it's, it's Jamola. And they said, Jamola, how did you get like this? And he said, I went to the animals. <laughs> and they said, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to stand in front of the mirror, and you're going to have to say, I love myself. I love myself the way I am. And so he went to the mirror. I love myself. I love myself the way I am. And the next thing you know, the giraffe's neck went away. And then he said, I love myself. I love myself the way I am. And then the elephant's trunk went away. Then what did he say? And then the rabbit's ears went away. Then what did he say? I love myself. I love myself the way I am. And then the zebra stripes went away. Then what did he say? I love myself. I love myself the way I am. And then the porcupine quills went away. Then what did he say? The lion's mane went away. Then what did he say? I love myself. I love myself the way I am. And then the monkey's tail went away. And then Jamola was back to normal. And with his chest stuck out very loud and very proud. What did he say? So, if someone comes to you and they say, I don't like the way your hair looks, or I don't like the way your nose looks, or I don't like the way your skin looks, what can you say? Exactly. I love myself. I love myself the way I am. And I'm going to make choices that are going to edify me, that are going to make me feel good. So Jamola made a positive choice, a positive choice, with his parents' urgence to love himself. And we can always do that. We can love ourselves, uh, do things that are going to edify us, uh, look back over our history and find things that are going to make us feel good about who we are. Don't subscribe to the negative notions of uh, what we are or who, what other people think we are. Uh, know ourselves, do our research. Uh, find information about us that will affirm us. Self-determination. Yes, the sword cuts both ways, um, but we can choose to make positive choices um, that are going to benefit us as individuals, benefit our community, and benefit our country. Thank you. So I want to thank Gary Moore again for offering that message, uh, certainly very timely and reflecting on all the legacy and how do we figure out 
given our cultural context, especially for those who are African American, how to make the choices that are needed in this life and in this time. I want to close with our hymn, uh, Be the Light from Leah Morris. And this is one of those, as we're thinking about coming into the end of 2021, uh, looking at all the things that moved us and how have we grown as a people, as culture, as individuals, and what are the moments that have been inspiring to us? And Leah created this him after listening to Amanda Gorman offer the poem at Joe Biden's, President Joe Biden's inauguration. So please enjoy with me, Be the Light. Hey, you guys, Leah here. So I must be among millions, if not billions of people who tuned in to the inauguration yesterday on January 20th, 2021. And I was inspired by every moment of it, but especially wrapped and lifted, exalted, just completely fixated and moved by Amanda Gorman's poem, her presence, her beauty, her artistry. And so this song was born. There is always a light. When we are ready to see it, there is always a light. When we are ready to be it, to see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night, to climb this hill, together we will. There is always your a light in the dark. When we are ready to see it. There is always your light. In the dark, we are ready to be it, to see the light, to be light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night, and be a gift. Together we will. There is always there is always your light. There is always the dark. We are ready to see it. There is always there is always your light. There is always in the dark. We are ready to be it, to see the light, to be the light. There is always 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 light.
Yeah. So I want to welcome everybody to our chance to be social and to visit a little bit. If you wish, if we wish together, it is good to see folks on this morning after Christmas. Thank you for joining us for our worship today. And also thank you for to Austin Locke for staffing the tech today. He's actually the one person who should be in the building because the tech is easier to run directly from our sanctuary. So yeah. For Austin Locke for getting out and about on this morning. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Nobody's in here but me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're all alone. There you go. All right. Hi, Greg. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Did 